So you're all in the tavern enjoying cold ones. What else would you like to do? Stabby, stabby time! Yep, it's time for a tavern brawl. Indeed, I suppose it's time for some more fireballs then. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, mounds of dead, charred bodies lie all around you. Good job, guys. No problem. It's all in a day's work. Wait, have, have we done a murder hobo video yet? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations has passed on that. As you stand there, a pale-skinned man wearing an outfit of skulls enters the tavern, surveys all of the dead bodies, and tosses the innkeeper some coins. Hold on a second. I think this is the all-powerful necromancer that we've been hearing about. Really? Well, well, what's he doing here? Does he want some cold ones too? He's probably here to get the corpses, you moron! Holy crap! I think you're right! It's stabby stabby time again! Come on, you guys. This is the all-powerful necromancer. The big bad of the entire campaign. And you guys are like level three. You don't stand a chance. Well, there's only one way to find out, Mr. Dungeon Master, sir. <laughs> oh, you just you just killed the big bad for the entire campaign, and we we had just sort of begun. Well, I, I guess the campaign's over. And you all won. Now, now listen here. You can't blame us. Yeah, you shouldn't have brought the big bad out this early in the campaign. Yeah, what were you trying to do? Foreshadow the big bad? That's an amateur mistake. Even Fat Cat knows that you don't make dinner until you're ready to eat it. You know, Mr. Dungeon Master, sir, you're, you're not very good at this Dungeons and Dragons thing, are you? <laughs> Welcome to the DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a Dungeon Master since high school. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can implement at your game table. Today in the Layer, I'm going to be discussing why you should consider foreshadowing the big bad of your D&D campaign, and five tips for doing so. But first, shameless plug incoming. I publish tons of completely free D&D resources over at my site, thedmlayer.com. There you can find entire D&D adventures to use in your games, fully fleshed out NPCs, new custom magic items, and lots of other cool stuff. And again, it's all free. See that beautiful link down below. Why should the Dungeon Master foreshadow the big bad? Basically, since this is the guy the heroes are ultimately going to face off against at the end of the campaign, it's a good idea to build up some anticipation and suspense before that showdown takes place. It's the same reason that movies cue the creepy music before something horrible happens. That music tells you that something bad is about to happen and you immediately begin to anticipate it. Suspense builds, tension mounts, you lean forward in your chair, you wait eagerly to see what's going to happen. And then it's stabby stabby time! Novels and stories are built this way too. As a reader gets deeper and deeper into a book, more and more about the central conflict and the personage behind it is revealed. It starts off slow at first, and then the pace picks up. The reader learns more and more, until finally, it's stabby stabby time! Nope, nope. No, no, it's the climax. It's, it's called a climax. So, same difference. And right about now, you're probably saying enough with the stupid skits, just give us the five tips. Very well then, five tips for foreshadowing a big bad. Number one, have the characters slowly hear more and more about the big bad. This is my preferred method of foreshadowing a big bad. It is the most natural, it is realistic, and it makes sense. In fact, this is exactly what I did with Lord Paxton, the big bad of my Sword Coast Guard campaign. As the heroes were adventuring in the world, they slowly started to hear mention of Lord Paxton. Orcs they fought shouted war cries to Lord Paxton. Lieutenants had letters from Lord Paxton on their desks. There were journals that mentioned him. The group came across historical texts that referenced the great Lord Paxton. Once, Lord Paxton even sent his emissary, Sebastian, mounted on an ancient white dragon to parlay with the heroes, offering them a place in his kingdom as rulers if they would but relent and strike a deal. Basically, wherever they turned, it was Lord Paxton this and Lord Paxton that. They couldn't escape the fact that Lord Paxton's hand was on the region. 
and that a final confrontation was likely inevitable. But I didn't tell them everything at once. It's important to strictly control the information your players have about the big bad. Imagine a horror movie where you know exactly what's going on or where you know from the very beginning exactly what the monster is that is killing everyone or a detective novel that reveals the mystery on page one. Those are called spoilers and people get angry about those. In the same way, those things would suck It'll also suck if you reveal everything about the big bad from the get-go. You want to build suspense and tension, not shatter it at your first bat. So dole out the information slowly. Number two, have the characters meet the big bad while at low level. Okay, I I'm gonna be perfectly honest here. This is not my favorite way to foreshadow nor introduce a big bad. I feel like this method is fraught with flaws and if not executed well, can crash and burn quite easily. But before I rip into it, let's cover the basic idea of how it goes. The characters conveniently run into the big bad while they are about level two or three or thereabouts. They get a sneak peek at the big bad and learn that he is up to no good. Except that I would first argue that this isn't really foreshadowing, or if it is, it's insanely obvious and not too subtle foreshadowing. You might as well have a sign on the big bad that says, hello, I'm an evil guy that you're not strong enough to fight right now, so don't even try, but I've been placed here by your dungeon master so you know what awaits you in 10 to 15 levels. Yeah. Because how this method usually goes is that the characters see the evil guy up to no good, but they are powerless to stop them or don't even try. And that's where the second flaw comes into play. What if your characters do try? I mean, what if your players say, screw it, we don't care that this is a scene the DM explicitly placed here just to give us a taste of his super awesome, super cool, big bad evil guy. Let's just kill him and get this over with. And so they fight the bad guy. But, but the dungeon master anticipated this possibility, of course, which is why the big bad is super powerful and can easily trounce the characters Essentially, the DM has given the bad guy plot armor for all intents and purposes. However, why doesn't the big bad just kill the characters then and there? Not to worry, the DM has an answer for this too. The big bad has a reason to leave the characters alive. They are beneath him. They aren't worth his time. He just wants to torment them, etc., etc., etc. So at, at some point here, doesn't it just seem like this would all start to feel just a little bit too contrived? You know, like the DM quite obviously planned it out. You see, the DM has slipped back into storytelling mode. The game is paused. Players can no longer make meaningful choices. Their actions no longer matter. And this means, of course, that their agency has been taken from them. However, however, what if the player's actions do matter? What if they can make meaningful choices? What if they do still have agency? And so, when they fight the big bad evil guy, the outcome of that fight is not necessarily a foregone conclusion. That is, the players might actually win and defeat the big bad early in the campaign. Now, now, wouldn't that be something? But you know, it, it'll never happen, it just won't. Dungeon Masters love their darlings just a little too much. And so here I am, running Curse of Strahd, and do you know what the module tells me? Strahd isn't a villain that stays in the shadows. He likes to interact with the characters. He likes to taunt them, torment them, watch them squirm. Thus, at level four, my characters received an invitation to dine with Strahd himself at Caxus to dine with Strahd himself at Castle Ravenloft. And of course, my players refused, <laughs> and, and intelligently so. So then Strahd visited them in Valaki himself and gave them no choice. And it was an interesting scene, I guess, with Strahd feeling them out and letting them know that in no uncertain terms, he was the Lord of Barovia and that all its inhabitants belonged to him. And my players sat there through it all. They even looked on helplessly as Strahd drank the blood of an innocent in front of their very eyes just to prove his dominion over the land and all of the people in it. Well, I say helplessly, but they could have done something. They, they could have tried at least, but they didn't. They just sat there, and, and do you know why? Because they knew it was a special scene intended to reveal a bit of the main villain to them. They knew that Strahd was too powerful for them. They knew that they really had no choice. They knew their dungeon master had contrived that scene for them, 
and like good players, they went along with it. So yeah, have your players meet the big bad at lower levels. It can be done right, but just be aware of all the issues associated with it and try to navigate them as best as you can. And good luck with it. Number three, use another similar contrived method. Now, now just because something is contrived and forced a little bit by the DM doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It really just depends on how interesting it is and how badly it breaks suspension of disbelief. But if the former outweighs the latter, you should be good. Characters could have dreams or nightmares that reveal information about the big bad. A character could have a vision of the future where an evil overlord rules over all, ushering in an age of darkness and oppression. Characters could have a similar thread through their backstories that links them all to a strange figure they were visited by when they were young. And as they grew up, they all constantly saw the same figure keeping tabs on them. I don't know, there's tons of variations you could use limited only by your own imagination. Number four, use misdirection. The basic idea here is to make your players think the big bad is one person, but actually have it be another person they didn't suspect. You'll be using foreshadowing techniques previously mentioned to point at the Patsy big bad, all the while having the true big bad pull the strings on the Patsy. Now, of course, you can't do this sort of thing too often or it becomes trite and predictable, but it can certainly be used to provide a fun twist to a campaign. It's kind of like having NPCs that always backstab the characters. They reach a point where it just becomes stupid, but a tiny bit is kind of like giving catnip to the kitties. A little pinch gets them happy and gets them wound up and exercising. A handful makes them chew your ankles off. Believe me, I know, I, I have no ankles. It goes right from calf to foot. There's a name for that. I don't have those. Let's get next. I could show you proof, but not today. For instance, you could position an evil queen as the big bad of the campaign doing your whole foreshadowing thing. However, along the way, you're doing some secondary foreshadowing and placing clues that not all is as it seems. You see, the queen has two dragon advisors because all rulers in this world have two draconic advisors as part of a centuries old treaty that ended a devastating war. But there is a third dragon who seethes with jealousy. And it is this third dragon who is manipulating the queen and her followers and planting the seeds of a conspiracy being led by one of the current two draconic advisors. This dragon's ultimate goal is to supplant that dragon as the queen's advisor, a spot that he is more deserving of. Just, just keep going down that rabbit hole and things get fun fast. And your players become more and more confused. Oh, the beautiful look on their faces. Or, or have a backseat big bad, like Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. Everyone sees Darth Vader and he's positioned as the principal antagonist. But when it comes right down to it, Darth Vader is replaceable and the Emperor is the true force to be reckoned with. Number five, use cutscenes. No, don't use cutscenes. Don't you ever, ever use cutscenes. This is Dungeons and Dragons. This is a game that involves your players. Not a cheap movie theater where players eat pizza and drink uh, pop, soda pop, and watch cutscenes showing the big bad going about their business in the world. I'm sorry, but the idea of cutscenes where instead of placing your players in a situation where they can actually interact with things, clues they can find, letters they can read, and discover information about the big bad on their own. Instead of giving your players something to do, you go on a 15 minute or longer monologue describing something the big bad or someone tangentially related to them is doing in the world. Instead of allowing your players to be active participants in the game, you regulate them to audience members for large stretches of time. This is like a bad Final Fantasy thing, right? Where you, the, half of the game, you're just watching somebody else do crap. Anyway, this is a bad, 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 very horrible, bad idea. Please, please avoid this. But Luke, someone will say, you can solve that by having the players role play the big bad in that cutscene. Look, when your 20 year old car is literally falling apart as you drive down the road, you don't fix it with duct tape, right? Okay, this this is probably a bad metaphor because you actually could fix the car with duct tape. I mean, duct tape can pretty much fix anything, I'm pretty sure. But, but my point is this, 
You don't make a bad idea better by combining it with another very bad idea. Giving to your players crap tons of information about your big bad and what's going on behind the scenes with the central conflict. And why would you need to do that? Because if you want the players to role play the big bad in those cut scenes, you need to dole out enough information so that they can reasonably do that. Otherwise, you're just gonna have a lame scene where your players are fumbling around and don't know what to do because they don't have enough information to go off of. And lest we forget Forget, we're talking about foreshadowing the big bad, not giving the players 80% of the information right out of the gate. However, I'm sure there's someone somewhere who has made cutscenes work and they'll let me know about that down in the comments. Don't forget to follow me over on Twitch for some chill live streams where I hang out, talk D&D, and even paint minis together. Let me know how you foreshadow big bads in your games. Next week, I'll be talking about how a DM can handle indecisive groups of players, but until then, click right here to learn about how to build the perfect boss fight. And until next time, let's play D&D.